This is Amateur Logic, episode 137 for December 15th, 2019. This episode of Amateur Logic is brought to you by MFJ, the world leaders in ham radio accessories at MFJEnterprises.com, and by ICOM. Wish it, wrap it, gift it, step up your gift giving game this year, and get your favorite ham, the transceiver, at the top of their list. ICOM. Good evening and welcome to a special Christmas episode of Amateur Logic. It's our Friday the 13th Christmas show. I'm George. I'm Tommy. We're Mio. And Mike. And we've got some special entertainment lined up for you tonight. In addition to some that's not so special, like, you know, is our custom. <laughs> <laughs> No, we have a fun show lined up tonight, and we're glad that uh, those of you who joined us live are uh, over there in the chat room. Some of you, some of you are just watching, but it's always a good crew in there. Anytime we're shooting live, we've got uh, a chat room going on at the same time. If you're watching right now, you can uh, join in there at amateurlogic.tv slash chat and keep up with the action as it happens. Yeah. Should I say it? If you're yeah. watching the live stream, you're not in the chat room, you're missing half the fun. And Mike will say, Mike doesn't remember. Which half? Which, which half? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Emil. I thought that was your line. <laughs> well, it, it's our mind. It's, it's optional. We have some special effects tonight. There are not many strings of Christmas lights that contain a black bulb, but we have one right there. They're hard to find. They are. They really are. Uh, we, we've also brought out the ceremonial leg lamp again, just, just special for the show tonight. It's a major award. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> So, let's go around the horn real quick, see what everybody's been up to. I I, I was uh, down in Nolens this week. Oh, yeah, email. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. And I managed, you know, ever since we went to Lafayette and I had that uh, jambalaya, I think that's the first time I've ever had it. Man, it was spot on. I've had a quest to find another good bowl of jambalaya. Never been able to do it until oh, you did New it. Orleans. You hit the mother I, load of jambalaya. Huh? I did, man. There's some good stuff there. Where'd you find that? Uh, it's a little restaurant that's um, on Canal Street, right right near the end of the Canal oh, yeah. Street. So, my mother-in-law used to make a great jambalaya. Oh, uh, you know, I don't, I can't take it super hot, and anything you that store bought, it just seems like. Well, it's Cajun food, so they just throw in extra pepper. But, uh, you know, this that we had in Lafayette and this that I had uh, this week seasoned just right. It wasn't too spicy. Yeah, they, they, the chicken on dewy combination with uh, the jambalaya, I mean, there's nothing like Lafayette in that area. Wow. Yeah. But, yeah, New Orleans, you can't, you can't beat some of the stuff they have down, downtown. Yeah. It was good. Anyway, I survived. I'm here. I made it back. Well, glad to see you made it through. Well, I am too. So what have you been up to? I've been in South Carolina. We had a project at work. <laughs> Looks like that put some hair on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to North Pole too. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, Emil, what's been going on with you? Well, in, uh, in New Orleans, I, I decided uh, to join up with some of the... Uh, uh, fellow hams and and put some services together 
which you'll see a little bit later. And that's kind of what I've been working on uh, in the shack these days, trying to turn it out instead of using it as a service, trying to uh, serve instead. You'll see a little bit of that. Cool. Mike. Yeah. Good. Cool. That, I don't, this may be a first. You're back two months in a row here. It's good <laughs> to have you back tonight. What have you been up to? Oh, not much. Things are uh, kind of gearing down or winding down for the holidays at work already. I can't believe we're already mid-December. I don't know where the time's gone by, but uh, I'm looking forward forward to some time off, and maybe I can get some of those uh, unstarted, unfinished kits uh, finished up. And I've been working on the ham shack, trying to reorganize it, so I hope to get that done as well. Cool. That's a worthy, worthy thing to do. I need to do a little bit of that while I'm off, too. Yep. So tell us what you're doing tonight, Tommy. You've got... Uh... Oh, for my segment? Yeah. Oh. Um, I kind of released some firmware for a lot of the radios, and so I went on an upgrade spree, upgraded several of my radios. I need to do the same thing. Uh, I'll, I'll watch you and, and cheat off of your work. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be, well, I'm going to show you a, a new little Internet of Things device I ran across that's very economical and seems to just work, works really easy. So we'll go through setting that up, and I'll tell you oh, cool. more yeah. about that. And, Mike, you're here with a Santa hat on, so I can only imagine you've got <laughs> something special coming up tonight. We do, and uh, we we searched the globe for uh, for uh, a number of these items that you'll see shortly, and uh, I think you'll enjoy uh, seeing the, them for the first time. Yeah, I I think you will, and it's uh, well, it, it's some neat stuff this yeah. this time around. It's it has a theme to it. Oh yeah, I only yeah. seen a little bit of it, so yeah, it'd be like a Christmas surprise for me. Hopefully. Those statements from Mike should always end with a dun dun dun, <laughs> <laughs> or a yeah. big disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got an email here tonight and uh, a project that one of our friends has been working on. This came from uh, Daniel McClure, KB0TDW, and he said ever since he saw uh, episode uh, where we talked about SDR that he had to go buy one and play around with it. I believe he's talking about a segment I did on Ham Nation where I showed the SDR plate, which we've shown here before as well. He bought one. Uh, it looked like fun. And he built an antenna for downloading the NOR satellites. And he thought he'd send some pictures of the project to show me. Here's the first one right here. It's the feed point of his antenna. He just went with a simple V-shaped dipole at 120 degrees, and he fed it with some 75 ohm coax, just stuff he had around the shack that he threw together. Pretty good SDR project. And there are some WeFax. Oh, wow. A couple of shots. So, used to uh, do that. Well, good deal, Daniel. That That's sounds cool. like, a, like a fun project. Well, I guess into the cheap stuff right off the top here. All right. Well, it is Christmas Tommy, time. If you'll Everybody grab that to save some money. If you'll grab that bottle over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, email. You want to set this one up? All right. Uh, yeah. So, like I said, um, I decided to, uh, I want to say give back, but I also use this service. Um but sometimes you are you are a user of a particular service that might be available on the air, and sometimes you uh, think about it and decide to go and serve some of those services for other hams, and uh, that's the jump and leap I took. Hey, George, Tommy, Amateur Logic. I've decided to take a plunge into the service side or server side of Amateur Radio's digital mode Winlink by setting up a VHF RMS gateway here in my area. I won't go too far into this because I know uh, many of you know what this is already, but what is WinLink? It's a worldwide radio email service that hams and mariners can use to send emails from just about anywhere on the planet via certain modes, protocols, and infrastructure. 
the area of the systems design that I'm serving is this middle area here, just under the internet and just over the stations called the remote message servers or RMS gateways to the system. It's uh, the VHF side that I chose to start with. Uh, I will look into others, but for now, I've decided to focus on this middle section tier called the RMS uh, servers and gateways on the VHF portions of a band. I think the why part to all of us is self-explanatory. Winlink has quite the history of response and as they call it, Winlink was there. Lots of information on their site about what disasters they've responded to and have uh, been a part of. One of my favorite parts of working with the Winlink system or using it in the past has been the multi-protocol, the networks, how they uh, route in different scenarios, the fact that it can work with or without the internet and hybrid operations and also point to point from ham to ham. You can set up networks and relays just like we would in voice situations. So it takes a little bit of understanding, but uh, the fact that it's multi-protocol, multi-pass of access is fascinating. It's always fascinated me. And uh, so the packet version, AX.25 protocol, again, is the, the method I chose to start with to serve a service. So the very design of the system can be used in normal alert or emergency conditions. And you'll see how they use tactical uh, protocol and uh, other things a little bit later. So I've put some thought into this and worked out or am working out with my club the tactical uses or some of the ideas that we might want to talk about for different scenarios, whether that is normal alert or disaster operations. And it's that thought that really matters to me, how your network of people and hams will actually use such a system or deploy as needed, depending on the scenario and also what's going on. It's very important to talk to your uh, area hams and people to coordinate what's going to happen, of course, before it happens. So the tactical use and, you know, a visual of what people might want to be doing with this system, as well as putting that on, in writing, it's important to me. So I started that with uh, my club. As far as the how part goes, I'm lucky to be a part of the W5SLA club here in Slidell, Louisiana, to be able to offer a service that's in sync with the infrastructure that exists out in our uh, parish, not counties down here, it's parishes. But the club maintains the tower site that's about at 600 feet, as well as an AX.25 protocol digipeter that can be used to access my gateway that I'm setting up for relay of uh, the, the system to the system and from the system. So, like I said, uh, it's a coordinated infrastructure, uh, in this case, for my, my start into this uh, service. Another thing I did was just to give people a head start, because there's a lot of people who don't know what it takes to use, use this system. But just to give people a head start, I, I put together in a presentation some working, known working combinations uh, to use the system. There are many more combinations than these, but just to show you a few, uh, whether it's sound card or PNC or what have you, uh, and even requesting information from other hams about what they know works, uh, that gets the dialogue started and generates some of the interest just to see who's got what out there and what's actually working. As for my system, what I'm doing basically is I have a shack uh, computer out there and it's a Linux server and it's basically talking via software TNC to my radio and I actually run the software over a IP network remotely from it 
in the house or somewhere else remotely. It can be a couple of different things there. Uh, like I said, this is a hybrid network and not only can you use the system as a whole with or without internet access, but you can also use your system uh, with or without that uh, or with it and, and extend where your pieces are. So there's, it's fascinating to me how uh, you can move these things around. But the general design here is on the left. You see the actual gateway, the RMS packet gateway versus its connection to the internet when it's available and then up to the WinLink CMS servers. And finally, the people, the users would actually use it over RF uh, to connect to it and check for their messages and or send messages. Uh, so that is the basics of what I had to set up and get permission. Basically, you send uh, the WinLink network a you know, promise that you will keep it up, to keep it updated, keep it up and functioning, and also monitor what's happening with it to keep it within the rules. So once you get that authorization, you can go ahead and set it up using your registration, your call sign, and their software, which is free. So that's basics. That's the basics of the actual RMS VHF packet gateway that I'm uh, running. Uh, I plan on changing it, and I plan on exploring the other protocols in the HF regions and other other many multiple protocols they use. Some people may not have infrastructure in their area. Uh, again, I think I'm lucky to be in an area that is serving uh, APRS as well as packet. Uh, you might know that APRS works on the 144, 390 frequency and normal packet or terminal type packet protocols, including WinLink, work off of the uh, 145.010. And there's variants of that. Uh, I've heard of places working on 030 and some other places having backbones that are running on uh, 70 centimeters, etc. So there's they just check out what's in your area to see what you can use if there's any gateways around you and or become a part of it like I'm I'm doing here. And there would be no cheap old man video uh worth its weight in pennies if I didn't say that the software is free. Not necessarily the radios or the time you're going to spend keeping it up, monitoring it, updating it etc. However, the software is free. <laughs> Two thumbs up on that one, huh? Two thumbs up. <laughs> and it, it did look quite economical. You know, I thought WinLink, that's free software, huh? Yeah, it is. You you can volunteer to contribute to their the Amateur Radio Safety Foundation, who maintains that whole system and uh, the top level servers there are in the uh, Amazon web service, you know, the AWS globally. And the other tiers are pretty much from that point down, it's all volunteer. And the software for all of those gateways is all free, including the client to use it is free. So that's cool. That's cool. pretty cool. Yeah, I've never I, I'm that. noticing that uh, Packet Radio and Wing, WinLink are, I seem to be making a big resurgence. Um, I don't know what the reason is for that. Maybe because. All the new digital modes that we're uh, using uh, mostly these days is all geared to the internet. In the event uh, where the internet isn't available, those systems will stop working, at least beyond local uh, RF coverage anyway. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Packet yeah. radio used to be so much fun. I really ought to try some of that again. Yeah, it, it did. I, there... I think there's an APRS gateway here. I don't know if there's any other yeah, I don't packet think so. activity. Well, maybe we could put one up. Yeah. yeah. I got a question maybe. for you, Mill. <laughs> okay. How how do you find uh, software-based uh, TNCs versus uh, the older hardware dedicated TNCs, uh, performance-wise? Yeah. So the terminology, Mike, if you want to search for it on is sound card right interfaces and that's that's pretty much what led me towards uh uz7 ho on the windows platform so, uh, sound modem i think it's uz7 ho sound modem and then in the linux side of the world there's 
uh, Dire Wolf uh, software. They spend they've been around forever, and uh, it all just seems to work and come together. But yeah, so if you search a lot about uh, sound modems and the the sound card TNCs, you'll find there's lots of stuff out there. So is the performance as good as say a, a standalone TNC? You think? So performance wise, yeah. If you know, there's lots, of, a little bit more setup, or, or uh, that might be debatable. You remember the old modem yeah. days where you <laughs> know all of the setup strings. The, the TNCs have the same type thing going on with them. So it's a, there's a give and take. Uh, they each have their advantages and they each have their disadvantages. Uh, I just fell in love with the sound modem uh, modes because the uh, it utilized the USB sound cards built into my rigs. You know, my ICOMs, my uh, Yesus. And, and that seemed like a perfect use for that. Um, so I, I just took off with, with those. And before I say, I want to give a shout out to uh, Glenn in the chat room, uh, KG5CEN. He, he helped me test out this uh, system. You know, I, we put it through its paces. We, we tried to mess it up. We tried to crash the gateway. And uh, we watched and did some packet sniffing of the AX.25 just to see what was happening and, and what might trip it up. So uh, thanks to Glenn, and also he, he trains people in our club. So, you know, uh, I don't know if you noticed in the presentation, but getting people involved in that or, how, or telling them how to use it, um, there's so many combinations of things that work with this. So if you let them put that input, you know, you give some ideas like what Mike, what you just asked about the sound card versus a TNC. There might be people out there who have a TNC, don't know anything about the PC side of it. So there's both sides that you can work with and tell them to provide you with some working combinations. And it kind of promotes involvement. Cool. Very cool. Thanks, Glenn. Uh, one, one thing came to mind there, not really related so much to that. Amateur radio and emergency communications you were talking about a moment ago. Uh, one of our, uh, well, local ham buddies, I say local, he's probably 60 or 70 miles away from mm -hmm. here, but a guy we talk to frequently uh, had an incident this past week to where uh, he got real ill and was unable to move, and he couldn't get to his phone, but he just happened to be by radio and managed to put out a call on the repeater and um, got the attention of of some emergency personnel, and they came and, uh, you know, got him and transported him to the hospital. Turns out he had a, a real serious kidney infection, and He's out now and, and doing better, but, uh, you know, if he wouldn't have been able to make that contact, it, you know, may not have gone so well. That's so. awesome. That's awesome to hear. You know, there's so many cases like that across the country, I'll bet, that you don't hear about. But, uh, you know, it's why it's that's part of the reason it's there. The hobby is great, but, yeah, it's public service as well and, and you know, whatever you want to make of it. So that's a good story. Yeah. Uh, email. Have you got an email tonight? Or Say that post? three times real fast. <laughs> email. From, let me read. Okay, email. Okay. Yeah, I, I do. I have an uh, email from um, uh, Dr. Grover, N8PZL. He was watching our episode where Peter and I were talking about uh, his trip over to the um, Friedrich, Friedrich Hoffen Hamfest in Germany. And uh, he noticed we were asking about the element uh, germanium, you know, uh, where I wonder if that's where germanium comes from. Well, he he has the answer being a, oh, a yeah? college professor, apparently. Oh, and he says the element germanium was first isolated by Clemens Alexander Winkler in the mid 1885. And he initially named it Neptium since Neptune was recently uh, dis uh, discovered as a planet. And it turns out another recently isolated element was already named Neptunium. <laughs> so he renamed it to Germanium after his uh, homeland, to honor his homeland. So thanks for that little tidbit, uh, Dr. Grover and 8 pzl Wow. Interesting. Interesting. You never know when you mention something on the show here, 
somebody's gonna gonna know the correct answer to oh, it yeah. and, and share it with you. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Good stuff there. Well we got a lot more to go tonight because it is an extra special episode, so we'll be back in just a moment. After months of extensive development and testing, it's finally here and ready to take remote operation to another level. The new RigPi station server from MFJ and Howard Nurse, W6HN, is going to change the way you think about getting on the air. Why be bound by the four walls of your ham shack when you can take it with you wherever you go? The MFJ1234 RigPi lets you operate from anywhere you have an internet connection on your Apple or Android mobile device, iPad, tablet, Kindle, laptop, or desktop computer without additional hardware. Just fire up any web browser and get on the air. RigPi connects to most any transceiver with cat control. Operate single sideband, CW, AM, FM, digital, or any mode your radio supports. Operate your rotor, CW keying, digital modes, logging, spot monitoring, call book lookups, and more. 32 user programmable macros let you control the features you want. Two or more hams from different locations can operate different radios at the same time using a single rig Pi. The MFJ1234 Raspberry Pi's Raspbian operating system comes with many free programs installed, like FT8, RIDI, WSJTX, FL Digi, a word processor, email, and spreadsheet. Plus, thousands of Linux-based programs, including many for ham radio, are available. The RigPi Station server is available as separate modules, allowing you to customize it a piece at a time, or get the complete unit with RigPi Base, OS firmware, audio board, and CW keyer board. The RigPi audio board connects to your radio and serves send and receive audio to your mobile device, or use it to operate digital modes like FT8 and FL Digi. It includes IQ inputs for use in pen adapters and has built-in isolation transformers for RF and Humphrey audio. The keyer board generates perfect Morse code using the popular K1EL wind keyer chip. Just connect your favorite paddle. Software modules for RigPi will be available on GitHub as a free open source download so you can add your own features in the future. Get your MFJ1234 RigPi today and take your remote operation to the next level. MFJ, the world leaders in ham radio accessories at MFJEnterprises.com. What a neat device. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's great. I love mine. I wish I got to use it more, but um, yeah. anyway, tried to, I'm going to try to set it up and uh, use it this weekend when I go out of mm. town or this week. But uh, it's pretty cool. I think that he's working on another big release of the software. I saw... He has a groups IO uh, group mm -hmm. also, and I saw that uh, he was asking about some people beta testing cool. the new release for it. So be anxious to see what kind of changes he's making. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Uh, what have you got tonight, Tommy? Well, you kind of briefly mentioned it earlier. Do you want to yeah, set it just, up? Uh, yeah, uh, there's some bug fixes and things that come out in the ICOM firmware. So I know a lot of people are kind of scared to do that. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going through the steps of updating that well, let's take a look at it well it looks like icom released a whole bunch of firmware updates for a lot of their radios so i noticed two of mine are updated my id5100 and my id51a plus two so i'm going to update those today it's a pretty easy process there's step-by-step -step instructions on the icom site we'll look at those in just a few moments uh, but a lot of people are a little bit leery about trying to update it um, but sometimes there's some good things in there. This update, or this round of updates rather, uh, looks like it fixes a data loss problem, I think, for fast data mode for some of the newer D-Star radios. To update it, at least for my two radios, you're going to need a cable. Now, I don't have the ICOM cable. I, I wasn't able to get one at first when I first got my 2820. And so I made a homemade cable, and it works, but you got to have a U. Uh, USB to serial adapter. Uh, they're not all made the same. I have an older one here. When I plug it up to Windows 10, it told me it wasn't supported any longer. So I'll use those ends for parts and throw the rest of it away. But I do have an older uh, trip light one here that I used to use at work, and I'll use that one. So just plug my serial cable to here. Now I would recommend buying the ICOM cable. 
because I think these serial adapters are getting kind of hard to find. You know, that's up to you. There are plans out there if you decide to make your own cable like I've got here. Uh, it, it does work. You're going to need to go to the ICOM site and download the firmware. It's at icomco.jp world support download firm. The URL is right here below. So find your radio. I'm going to go ahead and do the 5100 first. And I see there was one released on November the 6th of 2019. So if you click on that link, it tells you fix the issue where data loss may occur when communicating in DV fast data mode. And here's the cable you need for that radio or the options that you have. To use the cable for the first time, USB driver is required. Download it here. Please do that before you plug the cable up or hook your radio up to your computer. Uh, if you don't, Windows is probably going to try to install a driver that it thinks works and it's not the best one for your system. So be sure to install that first. Now, I, I previously did it because I've had my uh, computer hooked up to my radios before, so I've had it on there already. So I, I can't show you that piece. So go down here to Agree and it'll download the file for you. And if you see down here below, I've already done it. The main thing you're going to need to do otherwise is look at the firmware update instructions. They're right here. You click on them, agree, and it'll bring it up for you. And follow these instructions step by step. It's very important. I'm going to go ahead and hook this cable up to my compute to my radio, and then I'll hook it up to the USB port on my computer. That one that says data on it right there. Okay, so now that's hooked up to the USB hub and to my computer. Let's unzip our firmware file. So the 5100 one, I'll get this out of the way. I'll just copy it over here to my desktop. And to be sure that I have the right permissions to do this, I always right click and run as administrator. That way I don't have any permission issues. And I get this familiar protect, protected thing, click more info and then it'll allow you to run it. Updating is very risky, blah, blah, blah. You understand the following. Before updating, make a backup of the program contents. So let's do that. That's a good reminder. So let's go into menu, SD card. And I'm going to go up to save settings, a new file. It'll put today's date on it, 2019, November 27th. And I'll do enter. Save the file, yes. So it's going to save it to the SD card that I've already got in my rig. That, make sure you do have SD cards for your rigs, any of them that you update, because saving these settings will save you a headache. Otherwise, you're going to need to use whatever software you use to program your rig and make sure you've got the current settings backed up there and reprogram it that way. But this is this kind of takes all the guesswork out of it. So I'm going to hit menu and we'll go back out. So I'm going to click yes. Well, oh, what port am I on? I think I'm on port 7, but let's go double check. Ports. Yeah, trip light USB is COM7. So I'm going to pick 7. Set both left and right volume and squelch to the 9 o'clock position. That is at 9 o'clock, and that's at 9 o'clock, this one's at 9 o'clock. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put that side on DR mode so it won't make that noise while we're recording. Okay. While touching the quick button, turn on the power. So I need to turn off the power. Now let's hold this quick button right here and turn on the power. Now I can see my versions right here. CPM 1.2, S1 1.2, DSP is 1.11. Please check that the backlight is blinking. In plain as day we can see that for sure. Connecting, updating the firmware. It's going to take approximately two minutes. Do I wish to update the firmware? Yes. And it's going. So we'll give this just a minute or two. Almost there. 98%, 99%.
and it's restarting. Firmware update is completed. Click OK. And let's see if we can see what version we've got in here. Others, information, version. The DSP is 1.12 now instead of 1.11. So we are good. And as you notice, I did not lose my settings. Okay, so now that that was done, let's do my beloved trusty sidekick, my 51 a plus two so I can delete that off my desktop I will unzip the 51 plus two firmware let's minimize this we'll copy this to the desktop now I've got the instructions here I downloaded those let's take a look okay let's follow the instructions we're using the exact same cable as before make sure the USB driver is installed we already did that Incidentally, the USB driver is on the link there at the download place, or you can also find it in that folder amongst the firmware. Let's check our version. Boot up. I love this little thing. This I call this my sidekick because I take it with me literally everywhere I go. When I travel for work, it stays in my computer bag. So let's go into menu, others, Oops, information inversion. And I've got 1.02 and 1.01 for my firmware versions. Let's do it the same way. We'll move this over here. We'll right click on there, run as administrator, do more info, and I'll run it anyway because I trust these are true ICOM programs. Updating the firmware is risky. All previous memory contents will be lost. So let's go ahead and make that back up again, just like before. I'll hit menu, go to SD card, save settings, new file. I'll go ahead and take the standard file name, save the file, yes. And you can see it writing the file. Okay, that finished. Before updating the firmware, yes, I agree. I'm back on COM7 still. Click OK. Oops, I made a mistake. I've got to hook up the cable, and if you look at the side of your radio, one of these are marked data. So let's uh, plug that into data. One thing about making these homemade cables, my little 2.5 millimeter connector here doesn't fit in very well, so I need to unscrew it. The shields around here, the uh, jacket around this, so that that'll fit farther up into the connector. So let's go ahead and try that again. Now it goes in much farther. And first turn off the transceiver, hook up the cable while holding down the V megahertz button. The quick button and the squelch hold down the power for one second. That's going to be kind of tricky. So let's see. There. There. This, I need two more hands. There, there. Squelch and the power. Okay. Now, now we're cooking. You can see it flashing just like the other one did. Let's go ahead and run our program again. Yes, I agree. COM7. Okay. So it's connecting. Okay, so this is updating. And I'm just going to hold it here where I can keep the glare off. Okay, it's going. Save yourself some headaches and, and get the right cable. I will probably go ahead and order one of them myself for the next time this comes up. Not to mention the data cables are nice to have anyway if you want to do something like DRATs with your radio and so forth. The update is completed. Clicked OK. And I'm back. And it looks like I didn't lose my data here either. 
Let's look at the versions and make sure and see what we've got here. Others, there, information and version. Now they're both 1.02. So that was pretty easy. I would suggest checking them and see if you've got any updates out there for yours and, and install them. Again, uh, follow the instructions very carefully and make sure you back up all your data before you do it, just in case it happens to wipe your radio out. So, But it looks like mine stayed intact that time. Hopefully this will take some of the fear out of updating firmware for you. 73, we'll see you next time. Well, that did take some of the fear out for me, so if I see the light flashing, that doesn't mean I've busted my rig. That's, That's a good thing. Yeah. It means you actually, you got all your fingers in the right place and... Uh, yeah. That was a tough. That's a tough set of keystrokes there to get that to uh, the handy talk. Yeah, about. it looked like it wasn't going to be an accident. No, let not you flash it. It's obvious everybody in the chat room has the same uh, experience about upgrading firmwares on radios. We got to hold this button, hold your leg up, hold your hand up, do the yeah. hokey pokey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. Probably uh, saves on tech support calls in the long run. Oh, yeah. It does feel good, too, when you're all up to date and stuff. I don't know. It just uh, makes yeah. it better. Yeah, they just released a big round of, you know, for a lot of the radios that have the fast data mode in it. Yeah. I think it was <laughs> most of the... <laughs> Says the IT guy. <laughs> most of the recent um, rigs that have D-Star got uh -huh. an update, didn't they? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can't lose data as the IT guy. That's illegal. <laughs> no. You don't want to tell anybody <laughs> about it if it happens. <laughs> wow. Well, Tommy, what have you got on your email stuff? Well, over I've there? got an email that's kind of timely since it's near the end of the year here. It actually came in right at Thanksgiving, but it says, uh, it's addressed to both of us, George and Tommy, just want to say thank you for another great year of programming with AmateurLogic.tv and Ham College. It's always great to watch your new and past episodes, often discovering things I missed or things I forgot about. I forgot to say, this is from our friend Elliot, K1MF. Okay, Elliot. Um, anyway, it says, have a happy Thanksgiving, and may your families enjoy the holidays, and hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year 2020. Would be looking forward to New Year's Eve programming from Amateur Logic. I know it's hard work, and if you do have an episode on New Year's or if you don't have an episode of New Year's Eve, it's understandable. I look forward to it over the broadcast programming on that night. Cheers to 73, Elliot. And uh, we've, we've talked about that, and we, we might have a little bit of a conflict in it. Uh, it's probably going to be closer to a game time decision yeah. when, to find out for sure if we're going to do that. They, they are a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I would really like to do it I, if... If it works out where we can, uh, we'll be posting on all our social media sites. So, yeah, so stay you know, tuned so. to that. Yeah. Uh, so stay tuned. It, it, it is fun. Yeah. And, and it's, it's better than watching the ball drop in New York oh, City. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in half, half speed. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, oh, yeah, no doubt. <laughs> well, we'll be back in just a moment, but uh, don't go away. funny <laughs> okay. we'll be right back wish it wrap it gift it step up your gift giving game this year and get your favorite ham the transceiver at the top of their list icom offers a variety of high performance and innovative products make the most of this holiday season with one of these icom rigs today 
Tis the season to give your favorite ham the SDR they really want, the IC7610. This high-performance SDR has the ability to pick out the faintest of signals, even in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The IC7610 is a direct sampling software-defined radio that will change the world's definition of a SDR radio. RF Direct Sampling, 110 dB RMDR, independent dual receivers, and dual digicell. Ham for the holidays. The IC7300 is changing the way entry-level HF is designed. This high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design will far exceed your expectations. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3-inch color touchscreen, real-time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. The transceiver at the top of every ham's wish list this holiday season is the IC9700. Keep your competitive contesting edge with faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. ICOM's IC9700 is the pinnacle of perfection. 4.3-inch color touchscreen TFT LCD, dual watch operation, and full duplex operation in satellite mode. Real-time high-speed spectrum scope and waterfall display. SD memory card slot for voice recording and playback. Support for CW, AM, FM, single sideband, RIDI, and D-Star DV and DD modes. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on all these great ICOM radios. And thanks, ICOM, for sponsoring us here. And something they wanted us to mention is ICOM enjoys being ham radioactive. And December is Yoda Month, Y-O-T-A, youngsters on the air or <laughs> youth on the air, depending on where you are. Now, December is Region 1 and Region 2 Yoda activation, and ICOM encourages you to get on the air and make contact with this uh, fine group of young operators and help spread excitement in our hobby. Uh, you can get more information about it at events.ham-yota.com. Cool. Yep. Uh, Mike. You have something uh, that you wanted to mention tonight, don't you? Yeah, we had an announcement. Uh, actually, I read it last night uh, from our friends oh, uh, over in India. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Farron, I don't remember your call sign, but uh, many of you know him as the, well, not the original creator of, of the, the Bidix uh, uh, radios. Uh, it started out with the Bidix 40, which was a 40-meter uh, monobander, but uh, it's it's since then he's involved it into uh, uh, into multiband. And his latest version six is out right now. He's just released it, and it looks uh, looks really nice. Uh, he's he's taken a lot of the advice and and uh, comments from from people that have built the uh, previous models of the the micro bit X, and he's incorporated in into this latest version six. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, once a few builds get finished uh, to see uh, what what all the chatter is about. Oh, it's a nice looking kit, sure. Yeah, it is. I didn't know that he had added multiple bands. I thought they were all just one band, those kits. So. And, and Mike, it's uh, VU2 ESE. Thank you. So Mike, do you have one of these in your? Uh in your box of unfinished projects? <laughs> Actually, I don't see Marty in the chat room tonight, but we have this <laughs> this ongoing competition to see who can procrastinate building the... Um, I have the predecessor, which is the 40-meter monobander version, which was the BIDX-40, in an unfinished state. Um, basically, where it sits right now is the board is sitting in the case, in, in its wrapper, it's not mounted in the case, it's sitting in the case, and that's about as far as I've gotten with it. So hopefully over the holidays I'll have a chance to, to throw it all together. So you actually have gotten started then? Well, technically <laughs> I, I have started it, <laughs> but I'll have to leave that, uh, that up to the judges uh, to be sure. <laughs> well, you know... I've got a lot of projects like that going on. Some of them I actually have started on, but uh, 
that's as far as they've gotten. I'm working on one very similar to, well, to this thing I'm about to show you here that I just ran across. Let's let's take a quick look at uh, the Casa Plug uh, Smart IoT device. I want to show you something I found at the store the other day. I was in Best Buy and just happened to walk across a display where they had a lot of these right here. Casa Smart Wi-Fi Plug Mini. They're $14.99 each, and I thought, well, at that price, I think I'm going to buy one and just check it out. I've got other ways to turn on and off things over the Internet, but the price is right. Why not give it a try? It's made by TP-Link, which is a reputable company. Let's see what we got here. Not much to it. Just instructions to download the mobile app, connect to the network, and add it. So, let's try it. There's a device right there. Just plugs into the wall. It's got one AC outlet on it. It's good to 15 amps. And there's a power button here on the end of it. I assume that's so you could manually turn this outlet on and off if you needed to. There are apps available for both iOS and Android. I'm going to use this on an Android device, so let's do a search for Casa for Mobile, or however you pronounce that. And it looks like this is the one right here I want. It is from TP-Link, so we know that's the right folks. And I'm going to install the app. Okay, it's ready, so let's open it. And the app wants to run in portrait mode, so I rotated the tablet here. First thing you need to do is create an account. And now the app's going to want to know a few things. It'd like to know your location so that it can know when sunrise and sunset are, because you can actually do scheduling on this. Yeah, I don't think I want to get up to date, so we'll leave that off because I don't want any spam. Anonymous analytics, they don't need that. Bug reports. Uh, yeah, I guess we could send bug reports. Get started. Now we'll need to add a device. I probably should plug this in at some point. I guess I could go ahead and do that now. I've got it here on a power strip. See, there's a LED on the side. Flashing between blue and red, whatever that means. And I've got a light bulb plugged in, so we'll know if anything happens. I'm going to push the button on the side there. And it lights a light, so we know that's working. Now, how do I add the device? Let's see. Easy enough. Hit the plus sign up there. Add a device. We're going to add a smart plug. This is a smart plug mini. I've got the device plugged in and powered up. And the light is blinking orange and blue. The next thing you need to do is choose a network if it finds one. And it did. And then enter in a password for that. You don't need to see all of this. Name your device. Plug number one. That seems easy enough, doesn't it? Save says it's configured. Sounds good. Okay. Firmware update is available. Well, I really didn't want to go through all of this, but I guess we should be up to date for security purposes. Well, that didn't take too long. There's a device I added. If I added any of the other devices, because they've got a number of other things like cameras at different styles of these plugs, possibly some other items. This is the only one I've got right now, but you see your device right there. Device unreachable. It may be powered off or out of range. Hmm. That's not what we wanted to see, is it? Maybe we need to power it down after doing a firmware update. And it says local only here. Probably could do some research and figure out why. Well, it looks like it's off right now. Let's see. 
pretty fast. Here at the bottom, we can schedule it. We can use a timer. You know, I really need to look longer at this and see what all the options are, but it works. And that's all I wanted to show you here tonight. I'll do some more playing with it. I'll also find out how to access it remotely. I'm sure there's bound to be some way to do that. I don't have a particular use for this right now, but at that price, you know, it's handy to have hanging around. You can also control this device with Amazon's voice assistant or Google Home Assistant, or actually I can use my Android phone. First thing I need to do is uh, wake it up because I don't have mine spying on me all the time. Okay, Google. Turn on plug one. Okay, turning the plug one on. Turn off plug one. Okay, turning the plug one off. Pretty nice. Now, you could do all of this hands-free. I've got mine set up because I purposely only want this thing to listen when I want it to. The Casa Smart Wi-Fi Plug Mini. Tap that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I need to rename it. I need to go get one of those. There's actually a couple of them. I'd like to have one to uh, alternate turning some of the lights on and off in the house when I'm gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or possibly even turn on some of my, maybe some of my radio gear when I'm gone. Well, it was fourteen ninety nine at Office, uh, not Office Depot, at was Best it? Buy. Best Buy? Yeah. I'm and go tomorrow I, look, I looked online, and that's about the going price of those things. It's not bad for the money. Now, one tip I will give you here that I didn't know about that I learned to... Uh, in doing some searching to see, you know, how secure these type of devices were, I mean, I'm not real upset if somebody turns my light on or off, Probably, maybe. But anyway, I, I wouldn't want them to hack that device and get into my network and, and get to my computers and other stuff. So what you can do, you know, most modern Wi-Fi routers, if you look in there, you know, you've got your regular Wi-Fi account that you set up on it. You also have the option to set up a guest account. Well, turns out you should turn on a guest account and give it a different password, uh, separate from your regular wireless network, and then put your IoT devices on that guest account. Don't have it on the same account that, that you use for your other devices. And that way, if it got hacked, well, it's, you know, you've narrowed down the, the scope of what other devices could be attacked through it. Does that make sense, Emil? Yeah, segmentation. Segmentation. So I, got, I wonder if you've got to be on your local LAN to, uh, to use the Google Assistant to turn it on and off. No. So there you go. You don't even have to expose anything. No, you don't. Mm-mm. Um, you know, I've, I don't know how, how long ago I did that. It was at least a couple of weeks ago. And every now and then I think about it and I try to turn that light on and it, it's worked every time. So it's, you know, pretty rock solid so far. Um, for the price, you know, 15 bucks. Yeah, that's a pretty good deal. I don't think I'm going to yeah. probably grab one of those if they still have some. kind of reminds me of those X10 modules. Did you ever have any of those? I did, and I know what you're talking about, though, yeah. And, yeah, it would work pretty similar. We just need to figure out how to get it, uh, Peter to work it over Whisper. <laughs> yeah. I used to have a problem with my X10 modules. Every time there was a thunderstorm nearby, it would turn my lights on and off because it, it sent the signal over the power lines. <laughs> it wasn't wireless. I think, you, I think you turned off the Christmas lights, too. Huh. Uh, maybe my battery ran down. Emil? I didn't do it. <laughs> it, 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 it. <laughs> Is Peter on Whisper? Maybe he, <laughs> he, might be, he, he did it. <sighs> maybe so. Somebody hacked that device, George. <laughs> yeah, and that one's not even wireless. You can plainly see it's got wires on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 
Even wireless is wired somewhere. <laughs> is this where the battery is? Yeah. Oh, they just barely hanging on there. Flickering. Yeah, it's. I bought that thing last year, so, you know. I, I, it probably takes some weird battery that I'll never buy to replace it. So, anyway, maybe I could just put a a cord on it and plug it in the wall over there. That'll work once. Yeah. We'll plug it up with the leg lamp. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're going to be back in just a moment because it's the time that everyone's been waiting for tonight, our uh, Christmas gifts catalog. At the end of each month, it's Amateur Logic's Ham College, the new show for those new to the hobby and those wanting to get into amateur radio. Which of the following is a purpose of the amateur radio service as stated in the FCC rules and regulations? That inductor and capacitor form a tuned circuit. That's how you tune the radio to the frequency that you want. The English language. We lived in town. I liked it. I, I listened to mine a lot. It was really cool because you didn't have to have a battery to power yeah. There's our homemade telegraph station. We can use it for long distance communications. Oh, like, uh, what, three feet yeah, here? Across the table. The answer is B. Voltage was named after Italian physicist Alessandro Volta. We can see we're generating a little bit of electricity there. It's DC. It's always great to go back and get a refresher. It well, sure is. A lot of that stuff, if you've been a ham for a while like we have, you, you don't really think about a lot of that stuff that often. They didn't have electric screwdrivers in those days, so that's why we're not using one. That's why we went structures. primitive with it. Yeah. So let's see if we can hear anything when we, uh, we fire off our spark gap transmitter. Well, we didn't build anything or blow up anything today, but... Uh, the night's still young. You know, that's back when you were rocking that Chuck Norris hair. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. Ham College, check it out at the end of each month. Well, tonight, something special here. And if I push the button, and I hope that it works out like it's supposed to, if if it doesn't, well, there'll, there'll be no uh, no Christmas, Christmas this, this year. year. I <laughs> knew that was coming. <laughs> it read your mind. I think it's going to work, though. Uh, special <laughs> presentation here that we've been working on feverishly for, oh, I don't know, at least the last week. Maybe not the whole week, but part of it anyway. It's, well, set it up, Mike. The ALTV Crazy Christmas Catalog of Miskits. I mean, come on. Um, what discerning ham wouldn't want a new kit that nobody else has, has ever built before or played with? Um, we all know Joe, uh, Joe Eisenberg, the cat in the hat. We see him at all the uh, major ham fests, and he's he's the guy you want to talk to about kit building. But I bet you Joe Eisenberg hasn't even heard of these kits before. But we scan the globe, and we hope that we put together a catalog of kits that you've never seen or, or worked on before. So here we go. Take it away, Emil. Ah, the, the freaky leaf pie. <laughs> Never uh, built the Raspberry High kit yet, George. What state are you in? Is that legal? No, I don't think it is. Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, so this is probably one of those Canadian kits, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's it's legal in every province up here now. So you, yeah, but no you have worries. to buy those from the government, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you can you can place your order online. <laughs> Do they ship international? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> they can't ship cross border. What's up next here? Let's see. Oh yeah, this one. Yes, it's a, it's the Hellman a Devil Made Me Do It decision making kit. <laughs> and uh, if you like to make bad decisions, this kit's for you. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Another one we've got here, you know, these are, are misfits, which I guess means, what, misfit kit? Misfit kits, yes. Kits. I ran across this one right here. It is from QRT Kits. <laughs> Improve your troubleshooting skills, increase vocabulary, and remove unnecessary hair. <laughs> does, does that come with a guaranteed not to work? guarantee i believe it does as long as you don't touch those two bad solder joints there 
you're probably not in business. Wow. Or, or however you would say it. QRT kit. Get yours today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, oh, this is one you run across, Tommy. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Here, the lithium ion battery experimenters kit. <laughs> um, you need to be a little bit careful with this. We had to bar the excess fire extinguishers we had from the Crazy Jim torch kit yeah. from the previous <laughs> Christmas catalog. Um, but anyway, this is good. Just uh, don't turn your back on it. <laughs> Don't leave home with it charging either. That is an interesting one. Do they, do they sell that by the pound? They're not good for children or adults either. I thought I had Oh, yeah. Children or adults. <laughs> <laughs> Check your insurance policy before use. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good thing to do. <laughs> yeah, this, <laughs> this was an interesting one here. It's uh, There's not a di lot of detail about it, so you'll just kind of have to do some explaining. Uh-oh, I got explaining to do? Yeah. Oh, that's that's the SDR. Or Hard play. For pirate radio listening only. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> you got to wear the patch, too. If you don't wear the patch, it just the radio stations won't come through. I need no to get that one. Got when did they come out with that one? That's pretty, pretty awesome. <laughs> it's the pirate radio edition. Oh, boy, a grief kit. I always wanted a grief kit, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> <laughs> they were beyond my reach at the time, but uh, that one comes with the uh, the special probe. And, oh, uh, yeah, it's oh, no. it's the tap that thing signal tracer. <laughs> okay, you know there's a lot of uh, cheap Chinese kits out there. Some things just don't translate good to English, I guess. This is the DIY seven tubes. <laughs> Solid state AM radio AM solder radio. kit. Wait. Practice set electronics. <laughs> Where That's else are you going to find a seven tube solid state radio? That's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty tricky. It's only at Bangook. <laughs> what? Yeah, Bandgook. So oh. tube solid state. That's, yep. Those must be new. That's bleeding edge technology right there. I think it is. You've got another one here. I do. On sale now at All Ham Fest, the Box O Junk. These are <laughs> uh, these are manufactured or put together from uh, Jim's parts recovery segments. Yeah. So there could be some charred pieces in there too. Um, but we don't charge any extra for those. If you don't see it at your ham fest, you need to look under the table. There, there will be some under the tables at the ham Guaranteed fest. Guaranteed there's going to be some at the ham fest. Yep. You know what? I'll let you know on a, on a, a, I'll let you in on a secret. My cousin Jerry, he's been going to hamvention for, oh, forever. And uh, if you wait until the Sunday, they leave stuff that, like that behind. He's called, it's called bottom feeding. And you and you walk around and you can pick that stuff up for for nothing. L right literally. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the uh, new uh, uh, Python pretzel uh, programming assistant, and it's probably the last one you'll ever use. And if you bring that in the house, it's probably the last day you'll be married to your current wife, because I'm pretty sure mine would like leave. Yeah. You don't want to get tangled up with that code, Tommy. Nope. Oh, wow. Now, I have heard of this company before, I think, Mike. I thought they were. Oh, yeah, business. Radio Scrap. Yeah, those were great kits. Uh, I think they've brought them back for nostalgia. And um, I had a lot of trouble building mine. I think they're making them out of uh, uh, either Teflon or, or um, <laughs> asbestos now because I know when I was learning how to build electronic kits, I used to put too much heat on those little spring clips and they would melt through the plastic holes, and Every time. I ended up making a mess of them. So yeah. I think these are the new improved ones. P-Box kits. Wow, they got a, a lot of different ones there. Oh. Now, okay, oh, there's another one by that company, huh? Oh, yeah, the Infinity in one kit. <laughs> I had a similar kit, but it didn't have as many uh, possibilities as this one does. Boy, that would keep you busy for a while, I think. Uh, you know, uh, it. learn you have to learn desoldering skills first. I think. Oh, well, we've got a video from Jim for that. Yeah, we could we could use Jim's help, or even uh, 
Randy, K7AGE's help on this one. That's true. Mm -hmm. Run across another one here that seemed pretty interesting. Maybe it should come with a fire extinguisher too, or maybe some more safety devices. The Dilbert Atomic Energy Lab. It's a fusion cloud chamber, of course it is. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. perfectly safe. Otherwise, they wouldn't be selling the kits, right? That's right. right. Yeah. From uh, Dilbert. Uh, the Dilbert Hall of Science? Yep. It should, ha it should have Dilbert Alfred E. Nuclear Newman on there. What me worry. Yeah. This um, is Dilbert Nuclear Physics. Yeah, yeah. Atomic Energy Lab kit. It looks like it comes with a mouse there, too. Or maybe two mice. I don't know. I want morning. one of those. You're going to make a pretty good segment. I just I don't, I don't know. know. I, th I think, it, Tommy, if you if you were to get that gift for Chris Christmas, that would get you on the no-fly list for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, likely That's so. True. I don't know. Something's throwing up red flags for me on that one. Yeah. You know, I, just, I can't put my finger on it or it would get burned. But think, think, <laughs> think about the possibilities. You really wouldn't need, like, the battery for this thing would... Yeah. You could power all kind of things with that. What if you just weren't good at kit building at all? Is there is there a kit made just for you, Mike? Well, we we found a kit. It's called the Cant Kit. So if you can't kit, um, and there's even a bonus T-shirt that comes with it. So if you're not even sure which way to hold the soldering iron, uh, that'll straighten you out. Yep. If it smells like chicken, you're probably doing it wrong. That's <laughs> Exactly right. We like to save money when we can, and a lot of people... When Emil's looking. Yeah, when Emil's looking, and I think maybe he was on this next one here. I have seen this door before. It is a... <laughs> <laughs> Cajun fried components, cheap, deep fried, removed parts. Rather than use a torch like Jim... <laughs> They just deep fry them, and, and that takes them right off. That's a pretty awesome idea. I never thought of that. Yeah. That's the case when you it smells like chicken, you're doing it right. That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, the, on those commercials, the kernel keeps changing and changing. I haven't seen that one, but I like this one the best. He looks yeah. vaguely familiar. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like he's on, on an infomercial. He's even got the boom mic happening there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think email can probably tell us a little bit about this one. Hmm. Yeah. It's a Russian flavored cup of kit. <laughs> nice. I mean, cheap, right? Yeah. From, right. from oh, N5ZNO. Yeah, that's a great company. Let's see. Zero transistors. <laughs> oh, um, yum. Rosin yeah. flavor, too. Yeah. Transistors. C, nutrition info for total fat, saturated fat, and lead content. <laughs> yeah, in the bottom you corner there. Analog you, noodle. Yeah, you can't beat the analog noodles, Tommy. Yeah, those are good. And M5Z and O Company, they put out good stuff. <laughs> it's hard to beat the rosin flavor, too. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a really good thing. I'm going to go ahead and get some of that when we finish shooting tonight. I hadn't had supper yet. They have flung a craving <laughs> on me now. It'll put some lead in you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Listen. not the way I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. But I, I stopped. Well, we've got one final kit here tonight. And, Mike, I, I believe you've got a review unit on this one. Yeah, they they sent me a um, a production sample, I guess you could say. The resistor the decade eco box. resistor decade box. Uh, I'm not familiar with this company myself, but um, it's kind of hoping because I haven't got enough hands here. But I was going to open it up. Oh, Oops. cool! Resistor decade eco box. Eco resistor decade box. Hmm. What's in there? I don't know. Let's find out. It's it's well packaged. So according to the, the manual here, the kit contains resistors. I have a feeling... That's about right. Oh, you can see that. Oh, looks. yeah. Oh, looks just like the just like the manual. It must be... It's, it's not very often that, you know, the kits look exactly like the manual. Well, I know, that's, right? that's true. This is uh, one of the first pages in the manual. Congratulations on your purchase 
of a Genuine Eco Electronics Project Kit. The assembly instructions, uh, step one is sort the parts, sort your parts in increasing resistance value orders. Okay, there's your first instruction, Mike. Okay, I'm on it. All right, I'm doing it. Finish. Um. <laughs> measure from one lead sticking out of the resistor ball to the other lead sticking out of the other side. No, I'm doing it old school. I know the color code. Okay. Okay. And there's what, a hundred resistors in the box? Yeah, they're trying to confuse me though because. Some of them are 10% tolerance, and some of them are 5. Some of them were probably put in the, the box right-handed and others left-handed, too. <laughs> it's gold and silver. It's like best. Oh, oh, look at that one. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Step number two is hookup. Refer to the circuit diagram. Connect as shown in the schematic diagram let's see oh yeah is there is there another more detailed schematic <laughs> oh there it is oh there we go oh. perfect there must be a lot of terminals on that thing i'm i'm still sorting here you guys <laughs> you guys carry on you have to shove all of those terminals and there's two holes through the hole <laughs> no i got i got to sort i got to sort first uh, well, I wonder if there's a machine for this. See you at New Year's, Mike. At this point, you should be to step three, which is enjoy. 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 Yeah. Oh, <laughs> good footnote well, here. Important. It's going to take me. Sorry, go ahead, George. Yeah, it says What's the important footnote. Yeah, important in the unlikely event that you receive your kit with broken or missing parts. Do not return to the store. Instead, please contact ECO customer support, and we will replace any broken or missing parts. That's pretty good service there. Yeah, how can you beat yeah. that? The only thing, though, I don't know, did they include a bill of materials? Because I'm, I'm still sifting through parts here. So I, at this point, I can't really tell you if I'm missing any. Well, uh, they all look to be intact, but hmm. In the manual, I guess this is the last page here. I'm not sure you followed the instructions, Mike. At this point, you should have a, a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Are you are you satisfied? Well, ask me in 10 years because uh, <laughs> it's going to probably take me that long, and no wonder they call it a decade uh, resistance box. <laughs> because it's going to take me 10 years to sort through these things. I was wondering why the name. I guess that makes sense now. I guess the joke's on me. Yeah. I'll put that aside because I, I guess we don't really have time for that. Well, at least they Maybe in another, another episode I'll show you the completed product. Um, <laughs> I can hardly if, contain if the, myself. If the company's still in business. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Some, some great kits there from Raspberry Eye Hellman. QRT kits, lithium experimenters kit, yeah, the Arg Play grief kit, Van Gook box of junk, Python Prestel, radio scrap, Dilbert Atomic Energy Labs, Kent kits, Cajun fried components, cup of kit, and Eco. Thanks, thanks to all the uh, the sponsors in that catalog there. Do we base bomb? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure where you could find a better source of misfit kits. It looks like you've got pretty much all of them covered. I'm wondering if one of them would would like to be an ALTV sponsor. Ah, that. I'm, I'm sure many of our viewers would wouldn't mind receiving one of their kits. Um, maybe we could get uh, Dilbert to hook us up on some atomic energy kits. Yeah, it'd be pretty awesome. That'd be cool. You never really have to buy batteries again. Say, if if you didn't have a, a fancy... Hair, a hairy chest? <laughs> hairy chest <laughs> slash beard t-shirt. This is, this is what that rosin flavor will do for you. <laughs> let, let me check that out. 
<laughs> that that beard is totally fake. Oh, oh wow. I what? know that because I, I, I scanned it with my totally fake tricorder. <laughs> so where where could you find the real stuff? Well, you can get... Actually, you can do some of your Christmas shopping here. If you still got Christmas gifts to, to uh, come up with for some of your ham friends or for your ham self, you can go to amateurlogic.spreadshirt.com. We've got uh, t-shirts, golf shirts, ball caps, uh, coffee mugs, similar to the ones we have here on our desks, and uh, jackets, book bags, all kinds of stuff. We've got some ham college swag on there as well. Cool. So go get yours at amateurlogic.spreadshirt.com. Nice. Well, if you want to catch up with what's going on throughout the month with uh, Amateur Logic and find out when we'll be shooting the next episodes, if you want to watch the live stream, uh, you could even find out whether or not we're going to do a New Year's show this year, which we don't. We, we don't, don't even know, know for sure. <laughs> so it's that's a, how we're going to find out too. Uh, I think you're that's, right. That's how we roll. <laughs> well, you can do that at one of our fine social media sites, and those are facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash amateurlogic.tv. Or you can follow us, Amateur Logic, on Twitter. And I'm just stealing all of the Go, uh, social just stuff. Take here. it all. Being antisocial. Groups.io uh, slash G slash Amateur Logic, I think that is. It's got a label in front of it. But uh, we do have a fairly new groups.io uh, account or group there. And so if you're not into Facebook and some of the other Twitters, so you can go there and uh, get an email when we're going to do the live events. Wait a minute. What's that on email's head? This is my elf hat. The elf hat. Is it still got the price tag on it? <laughs> <laughs> we can re return it. It doesn't actually cost anything after the show. Did, didn't Mini Pearl used to leave the price tags on so people would know how little she paid for her hats? Isn't that why she did that? I That's think so. Good. Tommy, I had to supply. I don't know. doesn't hat. have a hat. <laughs> going on safari. Hey, yeah. No, not A. That's Australia. Or, or maybe Vietnam. I'm not, I'm not sure what that hat is for. I'm That's, not really sure either. I'm not even sure why I'm wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that was fun. Emil, the dogs haven't got that one yet? Oh, apparently not. This must have been hidden. <laughs> it's not dipped in gravy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the, the show notes, if you want to find out, um, well, any links that we've got to supply or any information like that, the notes on the show, you can find them here, amateurlogic.tv slash wiki. And I guess we're at the end of another Christmas episode. Yep. So you got some great uh, kit shopping ideas too. So if uh, if you don't need a t-shirt or something from the swag store, kits are always a great idea as well. Yep. Yeah, especially the uh, decade resistance box kit there. That could keep your kids busy for a long time. About a decade. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> or maybe about two minutes till they throw it in the trash and get their cell phone again. Well, we we've obviously shot this this show on the Raspberry High. <laughs> <laughs> if it we makes you wonder there's a lot of laughing going yeah, on. We should have. <laughs> I, uh, well, no. now I'm going to go get something to eat, so maybe it was true. Maybe it was. Well, before we get out of here tonight, uh, I, I want to say Merry Christmas to everyone and Happy Hanukkah and um, Kwanzaa. And Kwanzaa. Yeah. Whatever you celebrate. Yep. Have a good one. A, have a good one. Uh, Tommy, any any final thoughts there? 
before we no, get just, out. Uh, just be safe and enjoy your time with you, with your family, your loved ones, and uh, watch for the uh, watch the social media for if we're going to do the New Year show. Yeah, yeah. Email. I'm I'm yielding my time to Mike. Mike, you got to go first. <laughs> Well, safe travels if you have to travel over the holidays. I know it's it's um, it's uh, likely more treacherous up here than down there, but uh, you never know uh, that with the changing weather conditions. Uh, this time of year can be uh, a, a, a tricky time to drive on the roads, especially when you're trying to travel a lot distance to meet loved ones. Uh, so safe travels and uh, enjoy your uh, holidays. Okay. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everybody. From the swamps. From the swamps. And thanks for being here another year with us on Amateur Logic. And we look forward to a great 2020 coming up as well. Yep. 73, everybody. Yep. 73. 73. Set it up, Mike. Well, it's that time again, George, and you know, you know, we, well, that's yep. not right. Here we go. Take it away, Emil. Oh, boy. Hopes are not. Uh, okay, I, I took it away. Okay. <laughs> bring it, bring it back. <laughs> yeah. uh, Turn the power back on, Emil. Arnie, this spot's for you. Did somebody <laughs> hack your plug? No. Uh, this is not plugged in. Somebody attack your I, I kind of almost see a mouse cursor moving yeah. around on the screen. Yeah, that's Just a it. Dot. It's a mouse a cursor dot. kit. Enjoy, uh, Arnie. Merry Christmas, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that one comes with the uh, the special probe. Oh. And, uh, yeah, it's, oh, no. it's the tap that thing, signal <laughs> tracer. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I don't either. Turn around, and I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh. Oh my. Okay, moving right along. Next. Wow, they got a, a lot of different ones there. Oh. Now, What's that kid doing? <laughs> Nothing. Putting out the fire. Excuse me. Well, uh, oh boy. Well, this, is, this is. You know what? This is quickly turning into the New Year's Eve special. Yeah. You realize that, right? <laughs> that turned out worse. <laughs> there was a, you know, usually when you see that little boy, there's a stream there in front of him. Mike and I were talking about it. Well, yeah. And I said, well, maybe know, remove the never, stream. But Never cross the streams. Yeah. I was, I'm, my I'm mother not, always told me never cross the stream, so I never did. I'm not sure removing it really helped. No. <laughs> well, you know, it's a fashion thing. All the kids are wearing their pants like that these days.